Welcome everybody, Zed at Imperium Games. We're continuing down our countdown of 11 boxes that we are opening for our patrons at patreon.com slash Imperium Games. This is for our giveaways and our lotteries. Check out our seven other videos if you haven't seen them. I'm gonna roll the dice, gotta roll a two, three, four, or five. I'm aching for a two or a five. Let's see what we pull. A five, Dominaria, rock on. So, Dominaria came out, <clears throat> oop, I hit the camera again, 2018, so I believe it was in the spring of last year, and uh, looking forward to see the infamous scripture cards and uh, all of those great cards, it was the, 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 what is it, Gilded Lotus inside of there and a whole bunch of other ones. Let's crack this baby open. All right, guys, Dominaria, kind of looking forward to open this, came out last year and... Uh, let me get my tool here. Starting to understand a little bit more about the lands. And it wasn't these, seems to me, that they had check lands. Didn't they call them like enemy check lands or something like that. Like sulfur Falls and uh, those, those lands. Uh, Teferi, right? Uh, we had Karn in here. Scion. Uh, Mox Amber. I'm going to try and do this differently because it seems to me that I'm always... Uh, let's throw this on the floor. There you go. So this should be a lot of fun. How can I position this so this makes sense? If I do them over here, I empty that side. If I do them over here, I empty that side. Let's try this side. Let's see if we can make the camera view a little less heavy on the right and try and bounce it out with the left. Okay, so... Yeah, these ones are a little harder to open. Now, you know, just a quick FYI. So this box is still available at our distributors. Kind of cool to say. Uh, we got this, so but they're up there now. This price, I think, uh, starting price is 175 I think, taxes included. All right, Territory Allosaurus. So how do we place these so that we don't topple over them? Let's put the lands here, see if we can figure it out this way this time around. I'm gonna do it better. It seems to me that my videos all seemed heavy on one side. So I'm gonna try and focus on the left side of the camera this time. So I'm uh, kind of not looking forward to getting over to finishing the uh, these, uh, no, this is not gonna work. That's why I couldn't do it that way. And Evra, I'm not looking forward to finishing up this uh, series of box openings, although we do have a few more left, and as we said, we will be uh, opening them every time we get a new expansion set coming in, and Theros is, uh, oh, there you go, Oath of Teferi. Okay, so, see, by instinct, I put it over here on the left, and I didn't want to do that, so we're going to have to figure this out in another way. Put this up here, there you go. You'd think that I would have set up my camera system better. But as I've said, I actually have another life behind this one. I uh, own, I'm kind of a serial entrepreneur. Some people call me like that, serial entrepreneur. I have uh, several small companies that I operate here in Montreal. Uh, we'll talk about that as, uh, as we reveal a little bit more about uh, Peter and myself. Peter, you haven't had the chance to see him often on any of the, these videos. Peter is, likes to stay behind the scenes, but helps me organize all of this stuff. Scripture, right? Traxos, Scourge of Krug. Likes to stay a little bit more behind the scenes, but is helping us organize all of these videos, uh, you know, and our YouTube channel, and uh, we do have a Facebook channel. Uh, if there's an interest out there, you can always ask for a box opening or some type of topic in French. I did one video, you might have seen it, where we're talking about uh, Black Blade. Uh, of course, where we're, okay, I'm gonna have to reorganize this again. It's really just not working out. I think if I do it this way, it'll be easier for me. Um, yeah, so uh, you are, if you're interested in, uh, because you're French, you're here, you're located here in Quebec, just, just a comment in the section, in the comment section below saying that uh, you'd like to have a few, uh, you know, other content in French, and it'll be my pleasure to, uh, Daring Archaeologist, it'll be my pleasure to do a few videos in French. 
we do want to uh, comply with our French speaking audience. Uh, I'm actually part Italian, part English. I learned French when I was very, very young. Joda. I learned French when I was very young. I've been going, I started in French school when I was, geez, I think I was three years old. And then I was sent to daycare, in French daycare. Couldn't speak a word of French, but by the time I was uh, three and a half or four, Cabal Stronghold, all right. By the time I was three or four, hey, we have a foil scripture. Put that there. Um, and by the time I was uh, four years old, I was perfectly bilingual. My Italian is rusty though. I don't have a super good Italian. I'm half Italian. I do have, uh, over on my father's side, I'm, I'm Italian, but uh, it was English and French that were, uh, there you go, Fall of Thran. English and French were the languages that I was taught. And I, when I was traveling in Europe, I managed to pick up some Italian as well. So anyway, that's part of my personal life. Not super interesting perhaps at this stage, but the mending of Dominaria. So far, not a, uh, you know, nothing out of the park. We're halfway through the first side. Uh, we're halfway through the first side. That sounded great. We are through the first third of the box, the left side. Uh, not, uh, no, <laughs> not overly impressed. A couple of foils, but... Uh, not hitting our value. If we're going to try and make back $175, we are going to have to start picking this up. Not one mythic has come out either. What do we have here? Mm. Of all the mythics that I would be hoping for, oh God, I really do have all kinds of problems here. This would not have been the one. So I'll just leave that up there. This pile over here. Uh, here I'll put it here. So yeah, we're gonna have to start uh, getting a few more interesting cards here because uh, making back 175 bucks is gonna be, oh, there you go. One of the, uh, where do I put the, I really do keep doing that, you know what? Okay, so clearly, um, not the best organization, Checkland. So yeah, weren't these printed in, it said were they printed in Instrad, the Checklands? That's not super easy to open. So if you haven't seen it, we opened our first Patreon box. There we go. Naruhu Mihamahu Masi. Another mythic, and again, not the one we were hoping for. Oh, here we go. Well, wow, Rite of Belzenlock. It's our gold foil. I'll put it over here. I don't know that that's a home run either. It's not, it's not the top five that uh, I would have been hoping for. I don't believe it's a top, it's a hit. So if you haven't seen it, we opened up our first Patreon. We have a second Patreon member that has signed up for us, Helm of the Host. We have a second Patreon member now as well. We're very happy that uh, our channel and our Patreon group is already starting to grow. We have already sent out our cards to our first patron, Sir John. And yes, he's a sir because Lich's Monastery. He has signed up for the Knight and Lady tier. And feel free to walk over and see us, uh, or how do you say, uh, surf over to see us at patreon.com slash Imperium Games. So that we can continue to grow this community. And there's just no way I'm, there's no way I'm going to make this Sylvan Awakening. Okay, so this is going to be my last video with this absolutely horrendous setup. I've done all of my box openings like this. Basically what I'm doing is, usually you should have the camera coming straight down from your ceiling. And I need to do a setup like that. Right now, we have that set up in our office space at our LGS, but I haven't done it adequately in my room, so I can't seem to reach around the camera. If I hit the camera like this, you see, I'm hitting it, so I can't really reach around. And this box, we're halfway through. Not impressed, Thran Temple Gateway. Not impressed so far. But halfway, we still have hope. We've hit uh, one, two mythics, right? Yeah. Zahi, the djinn, the djinn of the lamp. I'm going to, uh, I've said this before, we've been uh, posting videos now for a couple of weeks and uh, a few people have reached out to me because I showed briefly on, on one of our videos uh, some of my older magic cards that I've been collecting. Man, this is terrible.
terrible, terrible so far. And so um, I'm going to, I'm going to do a, a video really soon just to go through some of my older cards to show people since when I've been, uh, oh, seem to have a video coming in. If you, I will pause this and come right back. Sorry about that. As you know, uh, when you are doing videos from your home office, the day goes on and I forgot to turn off my notifications. What I was saying is I'm going to uh, briefly do a, a, a video of my collection just for the fun of it. Somebody wanted to see what the value, you know, how much the cards had grown. You can easily do this. You go into eBay and you check them out. But what I'll do is I'll uh, lay out my cards. I've got a few vintage decks that I put together uh, about uh, two years ago. Um, because, oh God, if we don't start here, we already got this card. Holy crap, didn't we? Isn't this the very first gold card that we got? Well, this is not good. Um, I started uh, sort of polishing off my more uh, vintage collection uh, about seven or eight years ago before the market really exploded on that side. Now, if you listen to uh, Rudy and everybody else, God, this is terrible. If you listen to, to other channels, they say that, you know, the... The market for vintage has softened. You know, it might be a good time to buy. And again, you know, uh, it might also be that that market has been saturated. Dread shade. Not nowhere else. Love this card. Been around since Alpha. Beautiful card. Foil. Obviously not the original art. Um, apparently the market has softened. There's not so much interest anymore for vintage. How can you blame, you know, how can you blame the people that, uh, the, the, uh, the market, so to speak? I mean, oh my God, the, the, the cost of, of, of some of these cards is just in the thousands of dollars. And it seems to me that I heard, I would have heard an interview about Richard Garfield. He wasn't in the interview, but he was mentioning how, there you go, another check line. He was mentioning how it was never his intent that his game, as much as he wanted his game to be successful, and it is no doubt the, the, the most successful game card game, you know, or, or, or uh, TG, uh, T, uh, TCG, the, the most successful TCG in the world. Okay, so this is a definite flop. Um, he never expected his cards to, to, to go to the point where the reserve list was built and you, if you wanted to buy a car, a card, it could cost you, you know, the value of a car or part of your house. You know, I, I don't think he ever wanted that. His intent was not to limit access to the cards to any of the people that were playing and it just sort of worked out like that and i think that most of us understand that you know anything that is vintage you know we're not hitting anything here anything that is vintage and that has some type of emotion tag to it brings us back to when we were you know in our late teens early 20s and you're gonna feel this as i've said this in another video i'm in my late uh, my late 40s right now and what happens when you hit your 40s when it happens when you hit your 40s, you start to uh, crave, you, you start craving your, 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 your teens and your early 20s again. You, and you get very emotional. You know, you might go on, to, uh, go on to eBay and find an old G.I. Joe that you couldn't afford when you were a child. You'll never play with it, you know. You'll throw it into your, into your cupboard. Well, the first eruption. You'll throw it into your cupboard, you'll never play with it, but you couldn't have it when you were a child. You couldn't afford it when you were a teen. You wouldn't have bought it when you were a young adult. And then all of a sudden in your 40s, you start to have some disposable income. Finally, it has no value. I'll bet you it's a $5 card, but finally we have two. Oop. Again, I did it. We have two left. This is the worst Dominaria box I've ever gotten. It's awful. Oh my God. Well, you know, it is giveaway stuff, so. Anyway, so you hit your 40s, you have disposable income, and you start buying it. And that's part of the reason why I think it can still sell. You know, you can, somebody's willing to buy it, you got to have a lot of disposable income to put, you know, even a few thousand dollars. Oh, that wasn't, didn't go there. If you even put a thousand dollars on a card, it's really got to be because you've got an emotional attachment to the game. And you're craving what you couldn't have when you were younger. So I'll give a bit, I'm going to do another video right away on this. This is our last pack. It is a massive, massive disappointment. We got three. This should be a, uh, a mythic. So let's go slowly here. Mythic, mythic, mythic. Oh, we have this one already. It's our foil. 
All right, so it is giveaway stuff, giveaway materials. So I will do a quick evaluation, but my God, this has got to be the worst box of Dominaria I have ever opened. So let's see what it's worth. Oh my God, that was awful. I'm sure in the history of me opening booster boxes over the past how many years, it had to be the worst possible box I could have opened. Even Jaya, who I expected was around the five, six dollar mark, came in at around three dollars. Now, again, you know, TCG, US dollars. Uh, the most expensive card is Helm of the Host. I think it came out at seven bucks, and then Hinterland, of course. You know, I the 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 uh, the total for this came up to thirty three US dollars. Oh my God, what a wash! Even with the with the exchange, and if you were factoring in some costs for shipping, you're probably looking at fifty bucks. So add in all of the box the box at a buck. You know, at the top end, maybe seventy five dollars. So we uh, we hit less than half, in my opinion. We hit less than half of the value of this box. So I'm glad it happened to us and not to our, one of our patrons. I probably would have wanted to spin the wheel about ten times as a result. But this is why we're gonna do that. How awful. You buy a box and you get $30 worth. Now, obviously we hit none of the heavy hitters, you know. He, uh, Te Teferi is going somewhere around 40 right now. Mox Amber is about 30. Karn is about, you know, 15, whatever it is. Uh, and we hit nothing zip nada. So, ugh, awful, awful. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Uh, for watching me get totally washed on the Don Area box. Um, we have three boxes to go. It'll be coming up soon. Take care, guys and gals.